Good evening, everyone, and welcome to League Football Action. Well, I can tell you here at Football Park, it is wet, cold and windy. Today's game is the first semi-final. It's a cutthroat final. The losers finished for 1988. The two sides are Glenelg and Central. Let's have a look at what happened. Second term about to get underway here at Football Park in the first semi-final. The Dogs very inaccurate in the first term, kicking 1-10. The Tigers manage one goal. So it's the Dogs by six points. It's Glenelg going to attack very quickly through Alan Stringer. Out towards Kim Hodgman. Didn't have a lot of the action in the first term. Playing out of that forward pocket. Opposed to Scott Lee. I think this is the most important quarter that the Central Districts Football Club have played this year and perhaps in their history. Looking for a victory in a final. A fair comment, Daryl. Braddy to do the ruck work. He got it down towards Gerd. A mantle chipped in. And eventually that ball goes over the line. And there's the famous chant. Just beginning in the background. And my, it lifts the coach and it lifts the players. Well, does it need to lift them? They're staring at their eighth successive final loss. As Gilbert McAdam. Oh, that's why he was runner-up in the McGarry medal. Very skillful player. Out towards Gerd. And the handle into Braddy. They're making hard work of it over to Van Dommel. They still have possession, but, gee, they place themselves under pressure. Keith Allen, the meat in the sandwich. And the mark's been taken by Big Terry. Well, he's done nothing wrong. A brilliant defensive first quarter. Terry's kick is a wobbly one. Oh, in fact, it wobbled right out of James West's hands. As Hewitt, the only goal kicker for the Tigers. In fact, there's only been two goal kickers all day. Now the ball tapped out towards Schwert. He uses Sullivan. Having a good final series. The Pryor who kicked the goal for the Bulldogs. Van Dommel back to the centre field. But he's found the chest of Alan Stringer. Having a good battle with Jamie Thomas. Stringer drives long. It's a high kick. Setting himself is Melican. Couldn't take the mark. McDermott shows courage. We've seen that before. We'll have a ball up about 20 metres out from the Glenelg goal. One goal, 10. Central, the first term, Van Dommel working hard, but Gibbs down there in the forward pocket. He played loose in the first term. Now an angle, tight angle for a right foot kick. It's well placed and sent back with the breeze perfectly. So Rusty gets the first goal in the second term at the two-minute mark. A vital one for Glenelg to trail by four points. Mr. Magic. What a superb kick. Almost the impossible pocket. Placed it well, floated it back with the breeze. And that is a nail in the coffin. Two and a half minutes gone. 16 points played, 12. The last three encounters here at Football Park. The Dogs have won all three. They've met 11 times at Football Park. The Tigers winning the first eight. And as I mentioned, the Dogs the last three, as Jack Hilton recalls that bounce. One of the more popular umpires in South Australia. Great character, Jackie Hilton. Alan Stringer couldn't take the football. Thomas applied the tackle. And this time it's Michael Abbott. He's officiating in his second final to bounce the ball on the grandstand wing. Kerry wins that tap. Put it out towards McTavish. He's onto the ground at the expense of Maynard, who was injured a shin in the first term. And this time, Abbott will bounce once more, but on the opposite wing. Well, the dogs are going to be desperate. A good start. Bubner this time, up high. Having his first run on the ball. McAdam, oh, great handle. Gee, he's got tremendous skill. He hooks it up past centre-half forward. Man to make a met solidly. Firstly by Snabicla, then Salisbury. In there is Snabicla once more. Little Eddie Hockings onto the ground. Kaplan in there. And they're going to need these small men to run the ball into this breeze. That's a good tactic by Curley. The little fella with that great pace and agility to attack the Glenelg defence. Inside half forward and grabbing of the arm given. And that's gone against... The Bulldogs, Carey, switching the grandstand side. Alan Stringer there. Big kick getter. Trying to work it into the path of Hewitt. Succeeds. Oh, in fact, it was Wayne Stringer off the half-back line. Gurdham now for the Bulldogs. Allows West up. He's looking for help. Thomas in. Luckily back for Mac Adam. Chips short. Lally. 
through half forward, a long ball, but the man in front, Scott Salisbury, doing it well in opposition to Hockey. Two number 36s. Salisbury to centre wing. Braddy got to the front spot, Gurdam at the back. Oh, he's almost uh, lost it to teammate Bubner, who gets the kick. Good distance with the ball. Rudy, uh, man to make a front spot. Hockey loses his... Uh, Balance as Graham circles, feeds it back to Mandemaker. The shot at goal looks good. It's a beauty from Rudy. His first, the second one for the Bulldogs. And they restore a 10-point lead at the five-minute mark. Well, that's a better passage of play into the breeze. Philip Graham, the player, very, very elusive and evasive. Had to use the hand pass, but had time to lift the eyes. And Rudy's snapshot was just what the crowd and Bulldog supporters needed. Philip Graham, I think, would have played every position on the football field throughout his career. Been a great club man for the Dogs. Bubner opposed to Carey. Bubner up high. He's got a magnificent leap. In there is Van Dommel trying to clear the ball. A stalemate occurs. Six minutes gone. 22 points plays 12. And the crowd, I'm sure, are not sure which way this game will go. It's pretty evenly poised. Thomas went out the back door then, but Stringer took the handball. He kicks out wide. Leading in the chase is Butterick. In fact, Braddy, the ball bounced back that way. Braddy will need support. He's well tackled. McTavish in there. Over the top, Van Donald. Derek Kickett, who had some magnificent touches. And that one won't be allowed. There was a push in the back, and it'll go the way of McTavish. McTavish kick is a wobbly one. Goes straight towards Braddy, but he's well tackled. McDermott thought about the handball. Now goes directly towards goal. Just offline. An old 2-1. Central 2-10. The sun shines for the first time today on Central District. Can Chris McDermott offline. But certainly the breeze has dropped a little and the sun is now shining. Watka takes the kick in. McDermott had front spot. Sullivan came over the top of him in interference rules. We'll go the way of Chris McDermott. A couple of supporters, happy about that. And McDermott with Van Dommel gaining quite some meterage to stand the mark. McDermott kicks it high. Giving West a run at it. Oh, but coming over the top was Nellikin. Good judgment by the big fellow. And just that little bit of extra height over Craig Braddy at the second grab, down the wrist from the clean take. Chris Mellican has been a fine for Glenelg up forward. Confidence is built for the final series. That looks good. His first goal. And uh, number three on the board for Glenelg. They trail by four points. By three points. And that really does lift your confidence as a position player if you can take a big grab. McDermott placed it right in the slot for Millican and then with the left foot opening up the goal even further. And one always gets that little bit of confidence with the Bays that through their experience they can use the conditions better than Central District. 22 plays 19. Breeze favouring that northern end. Carey with the tap out towards Hewitt. He gets a quick kick away. It's up high. Back there is Sullivan. It was a good spoil away from Butterick. Kick it. Gets the handle out towards Schwert. Braddy applies the Shepherd. It was a good Shepherd too. It allowed Schwert to get that ball out in the direction of Chaplin. But Seabone picks up the crumbs and feeds off to Grenvold. And he had a couple of touches in this game so far. His kick was long. It was well intercepted by Schwert. Neil Curley. Flanked by Dean Mobs, Chris Grant and Peter Jonas. A good view from the grandstand. The ball will have to go back. The free kick will go the way of Peter Bubner. Kerry's been winning all of the ruck infringements, but this time Peter Bubner wins out. The short pass to find Stephen Schwert. So Schwert working hard. Marshall, an absolute star last week. Not getting the same freedom today. Good body work by Seabone to allow Stringer to take that mark. So a battle of defences. All the football being played on that outer side. 
The kick was looking for Butterick. Once more, it cleared the pack, and the mark was taken by Craig Braddy. Up on the half-back line, coming up to the 10-minute mark of this second term. Braddy's kick high, holding up against the strong wind. Centre wing area, Van Dommel left it behind. Allen working through, kick it. Short pass, that's well done. Thomas playing that loose man. Look for man to make, he's got him. Good use of the ball by the Bulldogs. And man to make a long way out. That kick at pass is a real sign of the way he plays. He's got great vision, good reflex. 60 degree angle. And the distance could be a problem with this win. But Rudy punched it straight through the middle. Oh, great goal by the full forward. Number three for the dog. A nine point lead at the ten and a half minute mark. Well, that's a lifter. The ball tapped out to kick it. The chip to Thomas. And Thomas clear again passes into the breeze to Mandamaker. Nothing that Dennis Russell could do. And when Rudy becomes confident, he's a hard man to beat. Well, that goal might just wake up the bay. Perhaps they thought after that great first term, the breeze would do all the work for them. It's certainly not the case. The Bulldogs have lifted their work rate. Van Dommel pushed in the back and receives the free kick. And a very good first term, Van Dommel. So the captain feeds off towards kick and he's having a great game. Once more, he must have had eyes in the back of his head then. He swung around. He knew where Scott Lee was. But the back pocket player spears out a pass. He's looking for Rudy again. He couldn't take that one. Salisbury grabs the crumbs. He ducked the head. That's why there was no free kick. McTavish, the game livening up here at the park. Russell and Man, the maker, exchange a few pleasantries. Mansell picks up the football, drives in long, and the mark's been taken by Sullivan. He plays on quickly. Well, the tempo's lifted. Van Dommel, two bounces, flanked by Kickett and Bubner. Bubner uses his pace. Oh, he got around Carey like he was uh, legless. Now the ball out. Salisbury. Hocking applied great pressure. Grinball shrugged off the tackle. Braddy, front position. Gurdham. The dogs appear to have the numbers at the moment. Scott Lee, good body work. Amble's out towards Bubner. He's well tackled by West. Lally in there. Alta McAdam. Good tackle by McDermott. Hewitt. Stringer. Long kick. But Sullivan, oh, he drops it. Gibbs is there. But it's three to one. They're everywhere, the dogs, at the moment. And that pass comes out to find Craig Braddy. From the centre wing, oh. Well, that's a poor end to some very, very tight and exciting football. No question being asked. <laughs> Certainly nothing being given. And McTavish to kick from the free. Centre half forward spot. James West in front. Off hands, Gibbs. Directs the ball beautifully to the goal span and goes through. Missed. Too much work on it. And the middle trail by eight points. Gibbs, the scorer of the first goal. The second, first goal this quarter. Looked like Kiki another. And what a dangerous player he is. 13 minutes gone, 28 plays 20. Certainly been the better quarter of the football, this second one. The ball to the outer side. In there is Thomas. He was tripped. Play on the call. Over the top there is Pryor. Lanell players holding jumpers and waving their arms everywhere, appealing for a free kick. Let's have a look at that again. Oh, in fact, it may have been his own player. So it was good umpiring by Michael Abbott. Carey tried to thump that to the uh, center area or a more central position. Look at Kickett. Oh, he's creative. Certainly has a style of football all of his own. He puts it out towards Gilbert McAdam. This guy's very similar. He looked for man to make it, but he didn't give the big full forward any opportunity at all then, as Russell will clear for the Tigers. Swings it wide. Lally in front. Still a little unsure of some of the marking. That's caused by the wind as Lee drives it deep. Rudy again. Over the head. Not seen. Wayne Stringer belts it forward. Fine. Brother Allen, infield to Mansell, a long ball, into the space of centre-half forward, good spoil Botka, McDermott leads in the race for the ball, Van Dommel in pursuit, good persistence, good persistence by McDermott, back to Melikin infield, 
Marshall down, hooks towards goal, it looks good. It's a goal. Well done, David Marshall. Number four on the board for Grinnells. And a two-point deficit at the 14 and a half to the mark. McDermott farmed it out. Melican across. Marshall. An impossible goal that gave it the room to move back with the breeze. Oh, what a passage of play. Inspirational stuff from the wingman who has been beaten on the day by Stephen Swerk. Absolutely incredible kick by Marshall. He was running away from the goal. He had to hook that right across his body under enormous pressure. Now it's back in the centre, though, as the ball comes out towards McTavish. He got that onto his boot quickly. It was touched off the boot, though. Play on the call. Mansell taps the ball out towards McDermott. He tried to get around kick it. Now the handball goes out to McTavish. He had good uh, vision to find Hodgman out there. And Kim Hodgman quite within range. And I think this is Hodgie's first touch. He's been roving, working hard. And I think this may be his first kick for the game. That lady looking very tense. In fact, I think she was nearly hyperventilating. Hodgman lines up the goal. Oh, it's a great kick. So Hodgman, he's a freak of kicking goal. Gets his first. It's a 16-minute mark. Central are three goals, 10, 28. Lanelgar, five goals, two, 32. They've taken the lead away from the Dogs. Well, the little rover in the pocket ripped out on his own. Tavish saw him wide. And that's what experience can do. He reads the breeze, puts the ball up long and high, kicked his first. 13 shots to seven in favour of the Bulldogs, but they trail by four points. Carey's tapped down. Chaplin knocking it back. Sullivan lumbering. Won't sit. Now he's working to kick it. Good ball control, but again it won't sit. And he's put it over the line on the foot. So the tide beginning to turn a little. Wayne Stringer to the space. In front was Braddy. Sullivan knocking on. McAdam there. McDermott quickly. Beautifully done. Robbed of possession, but kick it gets back in. Van Dommel looking for help. No running support. Chips to the centre wing area. Tried to work it to the line. Hocking down. And the ball will be thrown in almost to half forward right for the Bulldogs. Somebody has to tell Eddie to just slow down that little bit. He, he really attacked the ball. Half forward right. Allen doing the ruck work against Carey, the ladder down to Seabone. Gurdon well tackled. Allen Stringer whips it across to Wayne to Hewitt. Back to Wayne Stringer. And a high kick. Floats into the half forward region. Oh, West, good luck. Fine judgment, James West. In between two Bulldog men and took the mark to Solomon. Now, Ross Gibbs has run 40 metres to give instructions. West kick, looks good. James West gets his first goal of the game. Number six for Glenelg, and suddenly uh, they are 10 points in front. Well, that was a brilliant passage of play from Mark Hewitt across to Wayne Stringer, and in between the central players, James West timed the leap best. Then he got advice from Gibbsy as to where to place the ball, and it was good advice. So, the scoreboard certainly is quite a contrast. 6-2 to 3-10. Mantle tapped the ball forward. Back there is Braddy. Picks it up cleanly. Oh, he tried to chance his arm. He thought he could ride the tackle or break it. But West is pretty hot at the moment. He plays on quickly. He could kick another one. He goes towards goal. It's a mammoth kick. James West, two goals in one minute. Magnificent play by the Tigers and a half forward. Craig Braddy's face tells the story. He had controlled James West for a quarter and a half and suddenly the key position player has kicked two goals in two minutes. No change in complexion. Bonnell by 16. Using the breeze well. Seven goals out of nine shots couldn't be better. Alan Stringer helps it on its way. McDermott's there. 
given plenty of time. Mansell tumbles one forward. Steve Bickler now at centre half forward. Goes for goal. In front there was Pryor. Nelican working hard. Trying to get out the back was McTavish. The bounce is, is the result. Left ball with pocket. Steve Bickler in the forward line. Perhaps Centrals are playing loose in defence. But now the runner's telling John C. Bickler to come back. Botka belts it out the side to McAdam. And the ball will go out. Jamie Thomas unable to keep it in. Oh, pressure on! So it will be a throw in. Still inside the half forward line for Glenelg. The last four minutes of play have yielded four goals for the base. A real danger period now for the Bulldogs. Needs to close it up. McDermott working well. Hodgman off the side of the boot. Tickets under it. Would have got a free kick, it wasn't. Hewitt goes again for goal. This time he's put it out of play on the fourth. Derek Kickett perhaps having his best game for the season as a follower. And very unlucky. First the back and then the shoulder. The ball comes high looking for Bud. Now Alan Stringer up high, a strong mark. Well, their stars have lifted. Well, kick it appears to be, they're running two Ruck Rovers at the moment. That was a great mark by Stringer. Kick it appears to be the loose man in defence. That's why Schnabickler is loose, enabling him to form the wall across the centre line. Well, Alan Stringer started that out to the right-hand side. Ball comes to ground, gives his first air. Good shepherd there by... Mansell, Gibbs couldn't kick that from there. Oh, good joking. You've got to be kidding. Ross Gibbs, two goals from absolute impossible angles. He's a freak. The offhand ball, the rover. Or like a rover, Gibbs. Line turn, sold the ball. And that kick has to be seen to be believed. Dropped to the reserves back in the league side and kicking two match winning goals well 10 out of 10 to coach Thorns for strategy with that fellow Bubner belts it forward Grenvold to Marshall Alan Stringer caught Grenvold mops up once more but there's it's on behind play and the umpire in to give a free kick to Alan Stringer against Jamie Thomas for what appeared in action to be a hit to the head now Alan Stringer. Beverly around. Puts it to the centre half forward spot. James West. All the fingers are very sticky now. He's kicked two wonderful goals this quarter. Has taken two magnificent marks. And uh, such is the confidence of Jim West at the moment that he could kick this one as well. The breeze at the back. High ball, the distance is there. Oh, my word. Number three on the ball. And suddenly there is a gap of 28 points at the 23 minute mark. Well, earlier in the year, Steve Bickler playing poorly. Bourne sent West to centre half forward. And he kicked three goals in a quarter against Norwood. And today he's kicked three goals against Central Districts in the first semi final at a time in the game when Central Districts looked to be coming back with confidence. And again, West, the motivator. Well, the situation starting to look fairly ordinary for Central. 3-10, Glenelg 9-2. Magnificent kicking with these windy and gusty conditions. Carey poised to attack. Let's see how his leap compares to that of Bubner. I've not won that tab. He got it straight down to Jamie Thomas. Look at the football pull up in the breeze. It's out there towards Philip Graham and McGrath, who's having a run on the ball. He did that well, one way then the other. Now the short pass, that went about three feet. Eddie Hocking shrugged the tackle, then he put it out towards McGrath. He's stuck in that left forward pocket. That's a better short pass, and he found the captain in Van Dommel. They know not all that happy. Renee's worked very well today. He's been playing basically as a defensive follower, bringing the ball forward, always running and farming out, but now his turn to shoot. Well, he's yet to score in this game. He's 
side badly needs six points here. And that's a very good kick into an extremely difficult three. Great play by the skipper. Linnell got 9-2-56, Central 4-10-34. Eddie Hocking hit hard at the ball. Got clear of Wayne Stringer, out to Malcolm McGrath. In the Central District box was pretty anxious. The back pocket player, normally McGrath, chipping for Van Dommel. Van Dommel not known as the most accurate kick in the Bulldog side. Into time on now in this second term. Carey's cap beautifully to Alan Stringer. Wider for Hewitt, but kick it. Oh, intervening beautifully. Held. Van Dommel again. Up to the half forward line. Oh, but Scott Salisbury backed his judgment. Out looking for Hodgson. Hockey will run him down. Oh, Hodgson went for the white line. Sullivan makes sure it goes over and it will be a throw in between centre wing and half forward left. And a worried Bulldog camp. Curly mobs. Plenty of thinking to do. Bounce not favouring Thomas, but Lally going through. Got away from Carey. Into the space at centre-half forward. Chaplin down. Got it up nicely to McGrath. He's wide looking for McCadden. Gilbert McCadden goes goalward. It won't carry. Russell is there for Glenelg. Brenbold. Coming infield. Good distance in the kick to centre wing. Van Dommel, but not done by McDermott. Clever football. A throw in the result at centre wing. Dennis Russell on that last line. He's done everything that Graham Corns could possibly ask for. Gary Christie yet to have a run today. The coach is happy with Peter Carey. 26 and a half minutes gone. West contesting that ruck throw in. Couldn't really get a hand to it. Scott Lee did well to get up and kick that football. While Wayne Stringer showed great strength. His arm was held. Well, possibly both holding arms. But uh, Stringer certainly had the superior body strength. The long kick to centre half forward. West is his target. He got underneath that one. Braddy picked up the crumb, put it out towards. Well, he was looking for Buffner, but Stringer took the football. Now Mark Hewitt is there. He feeds off to Carey, who couldn't get a kick away. Graham was too quick with the tackle. Marshall tapped it out to Stringer. His kick nearly went backwards. Back there is Chickett. He's got to get around Mansell. Oh, oh look, you think he was a basketballer. Now the handball. He was tripped. Well, there's no questioning that uh, Derek Kicker does try and do too much. But have a look at that. He's a delight to watch. It's a uh, rather extravagant kicking action. The pass finds Bubner. They're running out of time. He should be a lot quicker than this, Peter Bubner. Oh, 27 and a half minutes gone. Curley wouldn't have been happy if the siren sounded then. Out towards Mandamaker, picked up by Lally. Carey in there, tackled by Hawking. The clearing kick is by McDermott. It's high. Schwert opposed to Marshall. Over the top of it, McDermott once more out to Seabone. Now Mansell. The tap line out towards Marshall was good. It was very clever. Mansell is down. He caught one late. But Budrick takes a great mark. Oh, McTavish is all by himself. He ignored him. He drives in long. Oh, and that's, uh, that wasn't good football. McTavish looked in despair. He's talking to Budrick. Now he drops his head, an opportunity wasted. Greg Budrick failing to lift the eyes. McTavish perfectly placed. 28 and a half minutes now elapsed in the second term. Malikin, but Sullivan for the Bulldogs, forcing to the line. And Glenelg has kicked eight goals to this term to three goals from the Bulldogs. And that very uh, keen followers. Mellican again doing the ruck work. The loose ball knocked out. Mac Adam trying to work through. He seems to be pushed in the back. A bit of a sloppy tackle from uh, Craig Butterick. But he certainly made his presence felt as uh, the cannon seems to have the wind knocked out of the sail. However, he's got possession. Back pocket with time ticking away in the second turn. Looks for Swert, finds that player on the half back line. But he is still in a lot of bother behind play. And he appears to have done an arm. Or certainly has an arm injury. High ball from Seabarn. Goes into the centre-half forward spot. Knocked on by Schwert. Knocked back by Alan Stringer. 
Braddy. Thought about the hand pass. Goes the kick. Finds Lee at half back. He is forced to go for distance footing for Jamie Thomas. Oh, well done by McTavish. And Glenel to come back in off the half back line. McTavish left foot kick. Drives in long. West got the front position very easily then. McAdam still carrying that arm, that right forearm it appears to be. West had a very good turn. Three goals in this second quarter. Drives in, Melican up high. Botka with the spoil. Kick it. His work rate's probably been the uh, highest I've seen of him this season. Now out to Gurdon. The handball to Bubner. It's a very long quarter. We've had 30 minutes. Bubner uses his athleticism. The kick's a wobbly one. It goes straight to Grenvold. He holds back on that one and punches it out towards Gibbs. Gibbs is kicked too. Magical goals in this term. Finds the chest of Butterick. Butterick centers the football this time looking for Carey who's taken out of it by Scott Lee but the ball just falls into the waiting arms of Kimmy Hodgman. Brilliant use of the ball. Butterick before missed McTavish didn't see him. But this time Carey bodied out and the rover Kim Hodgman who kicked the goal at the 16 minute mark aiming for his second. Well, he loves kicking goals as the siren sounds to end the second term. He's normally very accurate. He's a rover in the true sense. Corns isn't even going to have a look at this kick. Graham Corns has not even turned around and maybe he knew something because Hodgman, Hodgman's kick was awful. So the Tigers are nine goals, 3.57 at half time, leading the Dogs 4 10 34. Contagious. Since today it's Gavin Chaplin. The Bickler puts that ball up high, very close to the boundary line. A little bit of pushing out there on the outer side. Now the ball's tapped out towards Lounder. He tried to get a handball away. Seabone thumps it back towards the boundary line. Kick it there. Oh, picked up nicely by Alan Stringer. In fact, you could say stolen. He has two bounces. Still keeping that ball very close to the boundary line. Allen with the spoil. He's opposed to West now. Mantle in there. Pryor looking for the free kick. And he's won one. Mark Pryor, the veteran defender, been a great player for the club. Kick it over to Gurdon. The support comes from Scott Lee. The drop punt pass is out to the spaces. Leading there is man to make. Oh, snares it magnificently. There's the snap. Kachot. The kick around his body will bounce through. Man to make his kick three. The dogs are alive. And we've had two and a half minutes of this third term. Oh, so close, Rudy. But what ball touch? Scotty Lee put it in front, with one hand, evaded, suddenly clear to shoot across the body, and watch the ball bounce dangerously close to that right-hand goalpost. That's the start the Bulldogs wanted. 15 shots to 12, but they trail by 17 points. Carey and Lounder at the centre circle. The big Bulldog hits to Braddy, who looked for the free kick. Hodgman, well caught, and the umpire, no alternative but to bounce. Just ahead of the centre area on the Bulldogs zone. And Brady performed very well for one and a half quarters, but James West broke loose and kicked three goals to swing the tide in favour of Glenelg. Kick it trying to work through, it's McGrath possession. Hooks nicely, but it's too wide for Rudy. The bounce beat him. Lally. Over the top looking for Man the Maker. Russell held, not in possession. And working to the line, Salisbury decides to take it over. And it will be thrown in 30 metres from the behind post. Well, I can assure you I've just been down by the boundary and it is absolutely freezing out there. So I don't blame that Glenelg supporter having her ears wrapped up with that scarf. Van Dommel tried to tap the ball forward. Russell, who's been extremely desperate, dies over the top. So perhaps in that individual duel, Russell and Mandemaker, Mandemaker just edging ahead now. He's kicked three goals, two. Kerry thumps that back towards the boundary line. And this is the quarter that Glenelg will go to the far side. Yet in the second, they were able to bring the ball on the grandstand side or down the centre. Well, there's no question in my mind that Central will have to lead and be at least two or three up at three-quarter time, I feel, for any chance of winning this game. So, obviously, goals are of paramount importance. 
the amount of time they take to get them is extremely important as well. A little bit of bike play out there. Michael Abbott's done very well in his uh, first two final appearances. There's good control. He's let the game flow. Seabone. Out there is Stringer and Lally. I think that's about take three out of that right forward pocket. Well, there's not a lot you can do. The ball's on the boundary with the breeze blowing. You must centre the ball. Five and a half minutes played. Jamie Thomas coming in to uh, lend a hand. But McDermott getting the kick away and Marshall uh, Gibbs playing in front is down at half back. Two magnificent goals in the uh, second term and that ball going out of play on the full. Keith Allen, who started at centre half forward, is now at centre half back on Jim West. Keeps the ball low. He's looking for Braddy who had to defend. Knocking the ball to the white line for throw in at centre wing. And that man really not enjoying things. Must be a central supporter. Six minutes. Lounder trying to get front spot. Well done, Carey. Now Chaplin. Works the handball over. Lally did that well. Turns it into the centre half forward spot. McGrath pulled out. He was looking for the free kick. Grenville to Hodgman. Cleverly across to Alan Stringer. McDermott, Marshall on the run through half forward, closing on him as Pryor, loose ball out, squirt possession, infield he comes, Gurdon's there, to Chaplin, that Mark Pryor it is from centre wing, to the centre half forward spot, man to make a high, but the judgment is with Steve Bickler. Well, Steve Bickler has Carey out wide, so too Wayne Stringer. Kerry has plenty of time though as he places that ball out and oh, very casually Stephen Schwert drags in a one-handed mark. Over to Pryor. Van Dommel, Dr. Chutney. Now out towards Chapman. Oh, Salisbury came through at 100 miles an hour. The tackle was adjudged to be high. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, yep. well. Elbow and knee. A yeah, rather crude tackle. Chaplin's all right though, but that man Gibbs now playing loose in defence. Ross Gibbs is a master of making football look very easy. I can assure you it's not. David Marshall. Nice looking kick into the breeze. Lounder has front position and takes a good mark. And appreciate James West attention. What Lounder has to do though, he's got to form that wall and keep taking those strong marks. Back there is Carey. Up high was Bubner. Kick it in there. McGrath. Needs support. Oh, how did he get out of trouble then? That was incredible. He kicked towards goal. The accuracy not there. Ross Gibbs plays on. <laughs> He's a delight to watch. Drives back long. Up high was Mantle. The better judgment came from Van Dommel. Over towards Gurdum. Infield he goes to Pryor. Pryor, he dodging fresh air there. He did a full circle and kicks it out towards Scott Lee. Now Lee could kick a goal from here if he gets onto it properly. The umpire doesn't move. Van Dommel set the movement up to Durham, to Pryor and to Scott Lee and Central in hindsight using the breeze much better in the third quarter knowing that you have to go down the corridor or on the grandstand side and Scott Lee confident from defence and Glenelg would switch wings, Marshall across to this uh, grandstand side, Swerd has come with him. Knock on by Lounder. McGrath into uh, Chaplin, that was sloppy play by the Bulldog Rover. Greenbold the free kick, quickly to Hodgman. A ball holding up in the breeze, West spoiled by Allen. McDermott working through, goes to ground, gets the free kick. Chris McDermott, a very high work rate. Kicks in through half forward, West, but at the back of Buttery. Clearing the head of West, who now bolts to the space. But out comes Lee and takes a good mark in the pitch. Scott Lee plays on. Puts a hand pass to Chaplin. Off the half back line, Van Dommel. Well smothered, Scott falls for McDermott to Buttery. Buttery is McTavish loose. Infield, looking for West. Loses it. 
McTavish and Wentz. And quickly in Van Dommel. Schwert there. And the umpire will be forced to bounce the ball inside half forward for Glenel. Unfortunate for Tony McTavish on his left foot. Competed with James West. But the forwards held the ball in the area. Michael Abbott handling the pressure well. Puts ball to ground. Up high was West and Allen. The ball comes out towards Gilbert McAdam. He kicks around his body. The mark is taken by Hodgman. He goes straight back towards goal. Melican in front position. The spoil came from Botka. It was a massive thump away. Over the head of Mark Hewitt. Back towards Hodgman. His kick is high. Kick it has to stand his ground. That's a great mark, Derek Kicker. Well, the Dogs cannot afford to let the Tigers kick a goal this term. The ball out towards Wayne Stringer. Pryor uses the body magnificently, ducks the head intelligently, gets the handball back towards Scott Lee. In turn, he goes towards Gurdon. He's coming into the game. He has time. He must use the football well. Butler's the target, and it was magnificently positioned. Beautiful football to space from Gurdon. A lot more control and intelligence in the Bulldog play. Well, Peter Butler with that very balanced easy kicking style should make the distance minimum effort uh, once more the accuracy not there and again to the right of the goal post well they've got the line of attack right they're bringing it across the center and in from the left hand flank and although they are offline on that occasion the dogs have worked very hard Darrell, I know it's very uh, late in someone's career to change their kicking style, but he never kicks through the football, does he? A little bit relaxed. That's the style of Peter Bubble. 12 minutes into this third term. Gibbs. High kick. Plenty of distance in it. Lounder at the back of the pack, but in front of Big Carey. Good mark. Possession the name of the game for Glenelg. Defending to the outer side. Keeping the ball low, getting good distance, but Mark Pryor, fine Mark. Ought to be called to play on, he has in fact. Change in direction. Lounder the well position, or oh, good take, good use of the ball. And the Richard Lounder now has an opportunity. The distance should not be a problem. But he is a very good kick for a big man. He'll kick it 30, 30 metres past the goal. But again, accuracy with 11 points on the board. Accuracy will be crucial. Kick one point earlier on in the first term. And that ball is offline again. So another chance. Goes begging and the Bulldogs trail by nine points. Central District's moves are paying off. They're taking marks up forward. They've certainly been talking at halftime about the line of attack which is crucial at Football Park on a windy day. Well, with 13 minutes to go, gone, sorry, and perhaps 17 minutes to go, the Dogs really do have to start banging through a few goals as Gibbs brings the ball back into play. Carey takes the crumb, stockers it off the ground. Pryor using his body well, McDermott coming through, paddling that ball towards the boundary line, cutting it off with Braddy. But he raised the forearm and he's been penalised for it. There you see it. Uh, well, perhaps a little lucky, McDermott. Ready trying to fend away the player. It's pretty hot on that this year, though. You've got to keep your arms down. Buttering, front position. Well judged, Mark. Melican comes out on a long lead, that loafing style. He has front position. West chipped in before him, though. Schwartz had a good game over to Pryor. Pryor's playing the game of his life. To say he realises the importance of this game would be a massive understatement. Now Van Dommel, they're working it forward. Sullivan in half forward. The handle goes to Lally. They're running. They're running well. Back towards Chaplin, I think it was. And he's offline. And Sullivan's hurt, and she's a mate. Well, that's exciting football from Central. Just need a goal, an accurate shot to get their confidence up. Short pass to McTavish. Further afield, Wayne Stringer. And Glenel steadying. High kick, little distance in that one. Really bending back in the breeze. 
the wall of players, Salisbury, all had to go up, he's penalised, he's not. So a little bit of inconsistency creeping into the whistle. Half forward right, stopped Salisbury well for them. Lowne are trying to work for that front spot, Steve Nicklerk couldn't get clear. Well, the Bulldogs certainly have lifted the work rate. They have to find the big wide upright. And Peter Carey is the dominant ruckman at this time, and he's the player that Lanoue will rely upon. Carey knocking it back. The Bickler works it out. Salisbury's well caught again. The umpire calls that one a draw. So it'll be another bounce still at half forward for the dogs. 15 minutes gone, nearly 16. 49 plays 57. Lounder with the handball. Seabone tried to take it. Thomas in there. Braddy had an airy. So too did McTavish. Van Dommel couldn't reach the football. McDermott could as he got it over towards Marshall. His long handball found Mansell. He kept the ball in play. There's been a free kick for a high tackle. And the ball will go back towards Mansell. The crowd quite involved in this game of football. The young boy from Panola in his 12th game of football. League football, I should say. Up high was Hodgman. The crumbs came down to McDermott. He forced the handle out looking for Hewitt. In there is Scott Lee. He did well. He kept the ball in the area. He wanted a free kick for a high tackle. Very hard, though, when you're diving towards the ground. Allen with the tap to McAdam. McAdam's been quiet. Appears to be carrying an arm injury. And once more, we'll have a throw in on that outer side. That ball must come back to the centre for Central. Quite amazing. The Dogs have won six of the last encounters between these two sides. Once more, Thomas in there. He was held when he didn't have the football. No free kick. It doesn't matter, though, because Kicker got it out well towards Chaplin. He held back on that kick. And the maker. The spoil, the crumbs out to Bubner. McGrath struck the tackle. He lines up the goals. And, uh, gee, that is really ordinary. And uh, he's disappointed. And... That knocks the wind out of your sails when you miss that many opportunities. Peter said he was clear. He looked at the goal. Lost it. Oh, they love him. Infield he goes. Hodgman wants the ball. And he obliges. Big Allen pounding the body. Hodgman will go for Gibbs again, who has run into the forward pocket. And Gibbs steadies. But this time he's put it through for a point. It's spent, but spent too late. <laughs> You'd never bet against him. <laughs> well, that is the impossible pocket also with this breeze. And he didn't miss by more than centimetres. Kicking goes to the outer side where Mark Hewitt is well positioned. Millican over to help out, but the white line is the winner. But what confidence for Glenelg to reverse the play, run the ball the length of the ground. A crowd of about 17,000, a little disappointing. The weather really not in favour. Schwert playing well at centre wing, but in the way with Salisbury. Kicked it high. A real up and under job that. Kick it. Oh, beautifully done, Derek. Kick it. Millican tripping over the mark. What the given a 15 metre penalty and beautiful use of the body by Kick it. He's called the play on now, gives it to Pryor. Pryor found some meterage. Back to Sullivan, Pryor again. He's high tackled. And Mark Pryor is down. A very clumsy tackle. Someone's coming in to square off. But Mark Pryor doing everything to lift his side. Well, Scotty Salisbury was high on the tackle. Gilbert McAdam was up quickly. And Mark Pryor is down and out. The stretcher's coming out for him. Well, we may hear more of that. And that's sad because... Well, as you can see, uh, Glenelg really, in fact, Central really did make their task a difficult one by only managing to kick one goal ten in the first quarter, whereas Glenelg came out with the breeze and managed to kick eight goals. In the end, it was the Tigers by 21 points. After the game, Jerry Harrison spoke to a successful Glenelg coach, Graham Corns. Graham, another confident win and everything appearing to go to the uh, plan, no doubt. Well, the plan is to play the game, to win the game that you're playing, and that's about as uh, complicated as we like to make it. It's, um, 
was never going to be easy today and they had first use of a of a, uh, of a very strong breeze so that's always a worry and uh, we were fortunate that they didn't take them make the most of their opportunities and we were able to contain them and then use it effectively when we had it so yeah, it was a good game it was a good win for us well two things from their point of view one was uh, perhaps winning the toss and kicking inaccurately but also the rain wouldn't have helped their chances either yeah the rain yeah well, i know it did rain briefly i didn't think the rain was a major factor but uh, yeah that's footy though i guess you know they they didn't make the, the most of their opportunities and we were able to so well certainly you've been able to capitalize on opportunities in the past two weeks and then the opposition has kicked off line is that part of the the pressure that um, your team applies no i, I think if you look at, at, at uh, football history you'll see uh, games where teams for some inexplicable reason have kicked inaccurately there's there's no real reason other than the fact that it's a, a pretty windy day and we've had our moments this year too where we've kicked a lot more points and goals and kicked inaccurately in front of goals so i think it's just one of those things that happen and uh, there's no re no reason to suggest that next week they wouldn't have come out in the same circumstances and kicked uh, a lot less points and goals so maybe the pressure has got has got something to do with it but they did miss a lot of set shots as well but you appeared to have a better game plan in the second term when you went with the breeze you used the grandstand side much more effectively than centrals did yes i think there's a, a common misconception or uh, amongst footballers or they take it for granted that when they're kicking with the breeze that it's just going to fall into place you know you still have to win the ball you still have to use it quickly and you still have to use it effectively and there's no point just blasting it out to the other side there's a there's a dead pocket so to speak and you've got to you've got to be in a position where you can make the most of, of the breeze and use it to help you and if you don't do that it can sometimes be just as uh, difficult kicking with it as into it well it's another big team effort but i thought three people stood out carey stringer and gibbs yeah and i thought mcdermott played very well too you know he uh, he was under a cloud right until last night and i was you know 50 50 about how he uh, how fit he really was but he sort of gritted his teeth and he did very very well the players you mentioned did uh, well also and particularly ross gibbs you know he's had not an easy year for him it just didn't all happen for him like he's used to having it and uh, he's had to work for it and he, he got his opportunity today and he really seized it which is you know what you like to see as a coach it gives you a certain amount of satisfaction when you see a player bounce back and, and, and get his form back so it appears to say the corn strategy has won the psychological battle there <laughs> How do you know? How would you know? <laughs> and after the game, Jerry also spoke to a very serious central coach, Neil Curley. Neil, a disappointing end to the 1988 season after a good minor round. Well, I think that's fairly obvious, Jerry. We played two, uh, two, two final games and lost them both. And we got off to a bad start on, on both occasions, which is pretty hard to bear when you kick, kick like we did early. It was terrible. It was a good uh, toss to win, but the, the rain wouldn't have helped uh, twice during that quarter. Yeah, I don't think that actually had any ill effect on our kicking for goal. We just, the players just didn't, didn't do the job when they had to kick the goals. And uh, then when it was Glenelg's turn, they, they really did. And that's where the football match was won and lost. And, and actually the, the first half, in the, we kicked poorly and they kicked well. And they had a little bit more know-how than we did today. Certainly they seem to have a better game plan in the second term than you had in the first, but your third quarter, I thought, was much better. Yes, we worked well. You know, their game plan, is, it's pretty simple when you've got a big key centre-half forward controlling the game like they did in West. Um, and what he did in Mark, of course, he, he got out to people running past. We didn't have that type of player. Our third quarter, the boys worked hard, and uh, they worked hard in the last quarter. But we just couldn't give them that sort of start. It was just too much to expect to be able to come back in those conditions and, and take a side apart. Well, your defence certainly had to work hard right from the outset and that really kept you in the game. The loss of Pryor was a big blow. Well, yeah, it was, it was a blow, but um, you, know, you should be able to cover that one person and I thought we covered him okay. Um, no, it, it just got down to the fact that we had our opportunities early. We had enough of the ball in the first quarter to really set up a bit of a lead. And we didn't do it. We just kicked. We missed too many goals, and that's bad football. Well, certainly it is. But uh, they had a long way to come back after last week's defeat, and I thought to fight the game out the way they did today really showed a bit of character. Well, I think that's correct. I think a lot of people you know, that don't realise that uh, it was hard work out there today against a very experienced side. And I was pleased with the way nearly all our players fought the game out and worked hard to try and win the game. 
and uh, they didn't throw the towel in, they kept at it. And that, that's something, uh, that's a good foundation to build on for next year now. Yeah, well certainly they've come a long way in 88. Good luck in 89. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks. Well, a very analytical Neil Curley. With me once more is North Adelaide player David Wildey. David, I suppose we've got to mention it. Um, they've lost eight finals in succession. Now, uh, a lot of people are saying the doggy wobbles is a, uh, is a genuine problem. Yes, well, it seems to be. I mean, eight finals without a, without a win. But um, Central's today came out full of fire. They had their chances. They kicked with a very strong wind. And uh, the result was one goal to ten. Glenelg had one or two um, attacks. They, they managed to kick one goal. One goal to ten to one goal at um, quarter time. Just wasn't good football. Certainly wasn't. There was a lot of good players out there today, some great individual performances. I thought, uh, perhaps if we look at Central first, I thought it was Kickett's most uh, desperate game that he's played and most consistent for four quarters. Yeah, Kickett was outstanding. I mean, he's come in for a lot of flack this year in the fact that he's, people tend to think he's a bit lazy, but today's effort was tremendous and he, was, he attacked the body hard, he attacked the ball hard, and he did something constructive every time he got hold of the football. And on the other hand, Glenelg probably had about uh, three or four players were, that were just a bit as effective. Well, um, I, I thought Alan Stringer was clearly the best on ground today. Absolutely tremendous game from Alan in the centre. Hard, you know, he really attacks. Just on that, though, he's got a happy knack of intimidating his opponents, hasn't he? Yet keeping his own mind on the job. Well, I think that's the main difference with Alan Stringer of this year and of previous years. He's just concentrating on the football and yet other, the other, or the opposition, are still worrying about Alan and uh, perhaps they're tending to lose their concentration. And Peter Carey uh, playing his 40th final today, it's, a, it, it's an amazing achievement. And really, he just gave his run on play so many opportunities today. Yes, well, it was a big three in the centre, Stringer, Carey and McDermott. Peter Carey, what can you say? He's come up every week and say, <coughs> what a great effort he's done. And today was no exception. And you must also mention Chris McDermott under a cloud all week, as Graham Corns just said. He come out and probably had his 30 or 40 touches once again, so his was a tremendous effort. If there's a suspect area in the Glenelg side, perhaps maybe Melican, still not all that consistent up forward, even though looking dangerous? Yeah, he's a big, he's a big uh, fellow and you've still got to try and counter him, but he does, he does tend to go in and out of the game and uh, he's not perhaps, well, whether he's out or not, I don't know, Kim. Yeah, it's just a, it's a player, he, he interests me because he looks like he's a... He's going to uh, supply the goods, but he only managed one goal again today. He struggled a little bit last week, yet he appears to be dangerous on a lot of occasions. So I just wonder, going into the finals, you know, he's, there's got to be a slight question mark there as, he, as far as his ability is concerned to actually convert. Well, you've got to remember, today's conditions didn't suit full forwards once again. I mean, the ball was blowing around everywhere. Rudy Mann to make up the other end uh, did a reasonable job. And, well, I don't think today's conditions suited Chris Milligan. That's a fair point. They weren't good down there. Let's have a look at the results from other games played on the weekend. Of course, next Saturday, the grand final between Hawthorne and Melbourne should be an absolute ripper. And the grand final being played at Subiaco at the moment, or in WA, between Subiaco and Claremont at the 18-minute mark of the third quarter. Subiaco leading 54 to 37. And in the reserves today, Glenelg once again victorious, 86 points to 74. Next week in the reserves, Woodville take on Glenelg. And in the first semi-final, the big one today, Glenelg too strong, 12-9-81 to Central, 7-18-60, a 21-point victory. And of course, next Sunday, Norwood versus Glenelg in the preliminary final. That concludes our show for tonight. Stay with us for the news and again at 11 o'clock for late-night league football action.